Um, I'm going to keep chewing through my lunch, talking with my mouth a little bit as we get started a little bit here. So what I've got on screen now, like I was saying earlier, is some drawings I did last night where I got kind of into a little bit of a flow state a little bit. Like this is the but this is the starting point of an approach to drawing that is current the current plateau in my skill level that I want to try to work on, work through right now. What a plateau is is when you've progressed to a certain point and you're not feeling yourself progress progressing too much more. Um, so I work myself back up to this point that I've been in this I've been in the state that I'm in before, but I haven't moved too far beyond it. And so I'm hitting my my personal plateau for how I approach drawing right now. And I'm trying to lift myself off the plateau. I'm trying to do that by studying other work. I'll be even pulling in some photo reference to study for myself too, in addition to studying other professional work. Um, I'll be trying to play with shapes and be like feel myself around the stuff and play with it. Um, I have some characters and some concept designs that I might actually be developing during this. But the main thing for me right now is I'm trying to develop my approach for drawing so I can draw anything I want. Um, and developing a holistic approach for like how I approach drawing and animating. And it's based on volumes and gesture and a sense of structure to the characters that feels pretty good to me. So what we're going to be doing in this class is we're going to be going, we're going to be sharing inspiration. I'm going to be drawing stuff live. I might put some I might put some inspirational material that I'm going over on screen. Uh, let me see if I can actually let's see if I can actually focus the app that I'm using for that. Uh, there might be a oh, wait I here I'm going to try downloading the whole album so that the uh, I have a bunch of uh, the Yoyoshinari um, images that I'm using. I'll download those. But um, here's Yo Yoshinari stuff right here. He's an artist from Studio Trigger, uh, a director actually. Um, and he's got some sketchbooks, with, like a lot of amazing stuff in it, like this that I want to kind of draw. That I, I want to kind of like pull inspiration from. Because there's a lot of solid drawing all throughout it. Um, it's nice to see the guts of how he works through things and feels through shapes and constructs anatomy and occasionally sometimes uses photo or, or live rest, life reference for stuff or it does like little like studies and things and I kind of want to vibe from that and just kind of push myself more bits by bit by bit. I might actually be printing out some of these. What I've actually done today is there's a bunch of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles production art from the Line Studios, which, uh, let me see if I can get some of that on screen, but it's stuff like this. There was a segment by the Line Studios in the UK that did a bunch of um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, uh, they did like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles short, and then there's a bunch of production art for the model sheets from that. Oops, that's something else. That's, this is something else that I... I think this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Rise of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan art, but I just really like the designs for this, so I printed that one out too. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that that I have printed on my wall right now. Um, that I just really like the designs of these uh, these characters, so I'm kind of using them to vibe from a bit too. And I'll be printing out some more Yo-Yo Shinari stuff later. But... Um, of the stuff in here, there's some stuff in particular that's good to practice from. I'd say like this page, for example, has like really, you can kind of see the character puppet construction a little bit. Kind of this too. You can see like you constructed this, the hips, how you constructed the hips there. This is really sketchy, but this is still good shapes to kind of mess with. Um, a lot of his head drawing where he uh, he doesn't draw like a lot of his head sketching he doesn't draw a um, he doesn't draw an eye line for these because he uses the eye as the eye line 
to measure it out and stuff, like when it wraps around the head, kind of. He did. Kind of, you can see he was kind of like thinking in those terms when he did kind of bo this box head character over there. It's like practicing principles of art and stuff. You can see he's got a sense of dimensionality to even his kind of like more um, cartoony characters here. They're kind of stylized towards the camera, but they're, they still feel dimensional. There's some tizzy, oh, here's a <laughs> really nice Adventure Time sketch he did. But yeah, uh, there's some Tezuka related stuff in one of these folders that I'm going to try to find that does really, really, really simple shapes. This is kind of in that vein. I think this is, yeah, I think this is supposed to be kind of like an Astro Boyish character right here. This is uh, something that looks like early development art for what would become BNA, I think. I think that was specifically Tezuka stuff. There's a lot of great faces in this, for sure. Use more realistic faces. But yeah, how he feel, like feels through shapes and stuff is how I kind of want to vibe, basically. Great anatomy studies, stylized cat and animal stuff there. Uh, some legs, some leg stud design studies he was doing that are like these are very a lot of these are very um, tis, Osama Tezuka style legs. Let's see here. Now we're getting into Tezuka's territory. These are like very, very Osama Tezuka characters. He might have been doing these studies from um, Osama Tezuka manga. But yeah, I mean, there's pages like this. You can see him drawing a box around this character's head to kind of like get a better sense of like the uh, eye line and other things. Like he's using these to kind of work stuff out, to learn and to try things. So some of these are pages of testing out, like fun, these are kind of like design thumbnails for uh, effects animation. Using perspective there for some like kind of, kind of cockpit design looking things. I think the other folder has more Tezuka related stuff to look at. So I wanted to pull that to. Here we go. Oh, this is way more, way more realistic stuff like from like photos or from re maybe from real life in there too somewhere. Um, See if we can find a page of some very Tezuka stuff. I think there's some Cartoon Network. I think that's a Cartoon Network character in there. But yeah, I'm gonna pull one of these real quick to do a draw over study. I'm just gonna pick one. I'm gonna like this page. Copy that, uh, put that in here. I'll do like kind of a draw over study to kind of understand this, and I'll be learning the I'll be learning things as I'm showing this to you guys in here. So what I'm take, trying to take away from him is the ability to um, well his understanding of forms and how he breaks things down, and like this kind of great sense of like a line of action to his stuff. Oh, let's see here. Let's try maybe like let's go as simple as possible for this maybe. Like this.
could do it like that, or I could do it like this, maybe. But I kind of want to follow the limb, so I'll do that. Add some of the secondary lines of action in there for the limbs. Direction of the head. The top of the rib cage and the shoulders and the pelvis tilt at the head. Center line. I'm just kind of getting the feel for it right now. Kind of want to get a feel for like his the posture of his characters. So kind of that. Tilt that I'm wrapping around the form a little bit. Wrap around there for like the pelvis right there. He's got kind of shoulders are at this kind of angle. So it's like that. And the mass of the head there. Maybe just throw some eyes in there. In the ear, kind of. Gesture line for the hands here. Yeah, if you want to find uh, Yo Yo Shinari sketches, I'm just Google image search for Yo Yo Shinari sketchbook or sketches. I think there's a couple free books of his that are available online. I think that's how I got these a while ago. Cause, like these were these were available like f officially free online as like a gift to you kind of thing. I just don't know where. Oh, that was a chair, but I mean, it should be pretty easy to find Yoyo Shinari sketches in Google Image Search if you want to try practicing from these or drawing over them. So he's got kind of that center line there that's twisting up over this way. It's pelvis tilt there. I think that foot is facing us, kind of looks like. Bottom of the foot would be like that. I'm just trying to like pick up little tidbits from this. I'm just like get it in my bloodstream, basically. So I'm not gonna get it all at once. I'm just gonna I'm gonna get like little chunks of it every time I do this. So I'm going to keep coming back to him throughout the week to kind of vibe with him. There's a lot of other animators I know that are trying to learn from him. Um, so I'll be able to maybe I'll be able to talk to other people about other more effective ways to practice him. But one of the most effective ways is like well kind of what I'm in the vein what I'm doing now like finding the line of action and stuff and trying to find the some of the construction that he puts in and so on like I'm putting the rib cages in here kind of and the heads let me put a rib cage just straight away in there but um one of the ways that one person was showing earlier, who's also been studying him, is to kind of go over it and uh, try to find the base, the most basic construction shapes in his sketches. Form to kind of understand it a little bit more, or through it 
like on the other side like this, like these little rings. So I'm drawing like transparently this kind of wire mesh over here. About here is the eye line. You can do this not just with Yo Yo Shinari, you can do this with like anything you want to learn that has like good good solid drawing to it, like um, classic Disney stuff for example. I was doing that with Milk Hall drawings the other day for like some head drawing. You want to break things down into like basic volumetric shapes. In my case, for animation, I want to think of things in terms of volumes that can be easily moved around because I'm going to be animating. I want to find something I can wrap my head around that would work for me in the way I draw. And I'm not going to draw quite the way that Yo Yo Shinari draws, but, I, but, the, I, but the understanding of 3D forms and things is something that I want to take away from him. forms and gesture and expression. And just kind of playing with it and see what happens when I try breaking things down a bit. Or I try mimicking the way he draws sometimes. I want to get this stuff in my bloodstream so it's part of my visual library. showed off, I think, the previous week an exercise I did uh, using an artist I had found on ArtStation previously where I did something kind of like this. And I'm going to maybe do that, do what I did with Yo Yo Shinari with that too. Uh, just let me find it real quick. I believe it's in my backups folder because I moved it off my main hard drive. practice studies. Let me see if I can dig it out. Well, there's a couple things I can dig out. Uh, this I'd shown previously where I did some drawers of Matt Rhodes trying to feel out his shapes and stuff, although this is a little bit stiffer in the way I'm trying to approach Yo Yoshinari stuff right now. Um, this is another study I did of someone I found on ArtStation. It's a painter that works on the um, Dishonored series as a concept artist. They had some really cool stuff there that I kind of like the shape, the shape language of. Um, oh, here it is. So there's the original art down there. Then this is kind of like a draw over study right here. And then this is me trying to do some um, new poses of the character. As if I was like animating it using his, draw using his painting as a key pose. But I'm probably gonna do something like that for you. Oh, and uh, here's some the Samatezuka studies I did. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I mean, like that's what I'm. That's the kind of stuff I'm gonna have you all doing. Let's see if there's anything else worth showing. There's some. I'm probably gonna mix it up with stuff like this too. With, like some figure studies along these lines from photos, just to kind of touch base with reality in addition to kind of absorbing the shape language of cartoons. 
kind of thinking about stuff as he as they go through. I look at like how the way he handles simplifying the uh, the shoulders, for example, uh, the way he uh, the very yo yo shinari. There's little touches that are very yo yo shinari in general that you can kind of observe for how he draws characters, like the particular way he he does like those arms with the elbow kind of sticking out like that. Um, particular ways that the head is handled that I'm still trying to wrap my head around the head and the mouth that he does that's kind of like his signature there's, there's, there's particular expressive ways that he handles the hands too that are very particular to him But it has a wonderful feel to it, and the um, the dimensionality of it, and all the other, and like all the, the guts and the fundamentals underlying all of it is part of what I'm trying to absorb from this. Like the guts of what makes this feel nice is what I'm trying to get at here. Like these are rough, loose sketches, but there's like quite a lot of knowledge underlying it. I'm just kind of vibing with it and trying to absorb bits and pieces of it. I find it's it's generally for me it's better to do to do this with stuff like this that's more rough and loose because then it becomes more open to interpretation. Like I'm not trying to specifically copy the lines of the sketch. I'm trying to feel a, develop the forms a little bit if I can or understand them a little bit more I really like the kind of natural way this fe this pose feels like the lean the lean of the toper torso over there you can kind of feel the character's sense of like his his muscles and his bones sort of leaning against each other a bit. Yeah, um, you can watch me doing this stuff, but you guys should really right now be drawing a lot. You should be if you're not drawing, you should be grabbing some reference, you can look for Yo-Yo Shinari stuff, you can look for screen caps of studio trigger films that look good to study from. Uh, or you can grab artists that you're interested in, like I suggested Disney, like classic Disney stuff, even like modern Disney stuff. Be good. Stuff that you really want to learn and absorb some things from. Just dig that out. Preferably stuff that has really solid drawing to it. However it works, I mean you can print, you can have them nearby you and try to copy them, you can draw over the top of them, however you want to do your studies. I just want people drawing. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of, this is my absorbing phase right now, I did a lot of sketching out of my head and vibing from pictures around me, but now I feel like I kind of want to absorb and observe right now from drawing over and understanding someone else's work. If you're working in the animation industry, you need to do this in order to understand model sheets. Um, like if I was like say, let's say I got I, I got to the point where I had a good enough skill to get hired by the Lion Studios on that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles short. Um, I'd want to be doing something like this with the model sheets uh, initially to kind of understand them a bit. Understand the shape language and the uh, and practice the character models. I'd also be like drawing other versions of it. When I feel comfortable with this, from doing this, I'm going to start trying to build figures kind of similar to what he's done. I might stick with this page for that and try to 
try to build characters that are a little bit kind of in his vein. I'm not too concerned about strictly sticking with his style because of, I'm trying to learn just like I'm trying to focus mainly on fundamentals but I want um, to kind of like take a few drops away from this so I'm still trying to learn I'm not very good and I'm trying to get good and this, and this is literally me trying to work through a personal plateau of understanding and practice live in front of you all. So I'll be working through this and like the idea is that I'm going to keep at this for most of the today. There's actually going to be a live stream later tonight at 7 p.m. with Ethan Becker. Um, I think I think there's another special guest too, but I think I think Ethan is uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, I think it's the Blood Sun Vendetta guy and Ethan on stream together. I think. I'm not sure to double check that, but it's uh, there's going to be a live stream event through the Discord tonight. Um, I will be still drawing through that. Uh, there won't be a um, there won't be a figure drawing workshop tonight because of the timing of the stream. Uh, that doesn't mean that you should that you shouldn't still draw. In fact, you can still be doing this stuff. Uh, with characters or with photos of like live action things. I would encourage you to keep drawing, 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 and keep vibing. And keep vibing and drawing while you're watching the stream. Like if there's anything you take away from our Discord, I want you to be drawing every day that you're able to. And not lose heart and try to keep finding inspiration and try to when you have a, when you hit, find yourself hitting the wall of your limitations, as I am, uh, you try to figure out how you're gonna. F you try to figure out how you're going to push through that. And one of the ways I'm f I'm trying to push through that is by absorbing from a master like uh, Yo Yo Shinari. So I'm curious, like, what artists are people into that they are that they have found that they are trying to learn from, that they might be looking up right now, or that they could recommend, that we might even check out right now. CW, yeah, no, yeah. No. Still doing I really like Aki Bright's work. Yeah, oh, link, 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 link them in Discord, by the way. That's the best way for me to see them. In the Discord uh, classroom chat. Or Twitch. Uh, no, no, Discord ch chat, because uh, um, Twitch is a little bit harder for me to check. And you also, I don't think you can post links on Twitch. Alright, some of these are... Art this is it. Aki Bright. Let's take a look at them. Is there any non-worksafe stuff? Uh, not that I can find. There's suggestive stuff, but I don't see any any nudity. Yeah, there is some pretty suggestive stuff, so I'll just put on some. Yeah, there is a little nudity actually. Um, I'll put on some of the some of the stuff that isn't nude, but yeah, Aki Bright. Uh, here, this is their use. This is their Instagram name right there, and their stuff is definitely really good. This is someone who's definitely looked at Yoyo Shinari, or at least other manga artists. But they have, I see similar kinds of, uh, I see some of similar kinds of rhythms to Yoyo Shinari's work. So I think that that's a very Japanese artist thing, definitely, for sure. Um. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely someone I would want to pay attention to and maybe do studies from for sure. Yeah, there's ways that the characters are standing in some of these that look very much like Yoyo Shinari sketchbook stuff. It's great stuff, stuff for sure. Yeah, they would definitely be someone worth studying from. Um, let's see here.
I'm gonna look at some more of these a little later. I'm gonna look at maybe one more and then go back to drawing. Yusuke Murata, yeah, I know about him from uh, you know, One Punch Man fame and I Shield 21. He also did that lovely uh, Spider Man picture there. Yeah, he's ex he's excellent to study from for sure, no question. Yeah, I'll maybe peek at one more. Yeah, there's some good stuff people are posting in in the Discord ch classroom chat. Definitely a lot, a lot of good stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, grab the artists that you vibe with. That you want to learn from. Um, I'm actually going, yeah, and I'm going to invite people to post their studies here too in, in the chat. So I'm going to also encourage people to maybe think in the direction of studying in the direction of a personal project you start you're trying to develop I have I have reasons for why I'm trying to study Yo Yoshinari there's bits and pieces of him that I want in uh, in some of the ideas that I have uh, one of them was like that kind of gothic horror thing that I was showing last week but I'm not anywhere near the level of the drawing execution that I want to do that right so I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna, just gonna keep trying and going back and developing. I may actually spend some of the time here trying to take another crack at one of the characters, but I want to see where I where this goes first. Yeah, screw it. Let's try it right now. I've got some previous drawings I did of him. So I can just vibe from that real quick. Alright, so here's some doodles I did in Storyboard Pro the other day of one of the characters. This is something I did quite a bit previously. Sort of vibing, when I was vibing for my Captain Hook model sheet. So, let me just put that away real quick. Or maybe move it to the side, because then I can kind of interconnect this with what I was just with what I was just studying a little bit. All right, so I'll talk a little bit more about this character and what I have in mind for him. Um, He's a sort of a plague doctor surgeon that's in like this kind of um, world of like these body horror plague victims basically that are like these giant monsters, um, giant shape shifting monsters, and uh, the way he fights is he fights with kind of a uh, giant with large surgical tools more or less. Huh? What's that from? And there's something I made up. Oh. So the um there's a few things I have in mind with him, like um his primary weapons are a hook a hook and a crook that are on kind of like thread chains or something like that. I'm thinking like I might move in the direction of like wire or surgical thread or something. Here's the hook, and here's the crook. And 
and the joke with that is that one of them is an exclamation mark and the others are, others are question mark kind of so there's kind of humor to his design he looks also a little bit like a spy versus spy character and he's fond of wearing a white outfit and a black outfit um, like Dr. Mask? yeah the plague doctor mask uh, one of the things I was playing more with him was about like showing more of his mouth so I could get more acting with him and then maybe I could make his I was thinking about the idea of making more of his brow an expressive part of the Plague Doctor mask I'm not sure how much of it should be squared off here Says I don't know let's try different versions of maybe a shorter Plague Doctor nose longer um, more squared off looks like, that looks like a toucan needle nose and uh, another question that I will want to what I want to ask is can, are his eyes visible in there that looks a little goofy so no Maybe they might be visible sometimes, or maybe like... Or I might stylize them or something like this. But I think the Batman approach of like making them kind of... White against black or something might be good. So there's definitely some Batman in this guy. He's got kind of a cowl thing here. He's a very Phantom of the Opera type character, including in his story, where he's seeking revenge on the peop on the people that... He's actually a plague victim himself, but he's like a carrier uh, that's in control of himself. He was... Uh, I th the way this story is shaping out, he was basically like patient zero of the plague as it exists now. And it was a result of uh, some evil medical professionals in his world, uh, like screwing him over, basically. Like the plague was basically their fault, misusing his research. And so he's out for revenge, but he's also got kind of a kind of Monte Crystal thing going on, where the, he uh, projects a alter ego behind a mask, and uh, his original, so his original identity is, un is not known, but suspected by the, uh, the people who he's trying to get revenge on. So let's see here, there's some key images for him that I have that are like really, really basic thumbnail kind of stuff. See if I can find it real quick. Here you go, art archives. And I think I showed some of this last week. I'm gonna show it again. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Let's go over some of these real quick. Some of my initial drawings of the idea for him. Other versions of him. Him without his mask. Another take on him. This is one of the this is one of the key images I want keep wanting to go back to because I I feel like I would want to develop like this is like kind of a a center point for like how I would want to handle um, battles in his uh, or like the sets that I choose for the for the battles take place. This is like a really really rough quick just getting the note down of the idea for when I come back to it. Um, but but, but I I want to make a scene, I want to make like a battle scene with him versus like a, one of a giant one of the giant play creatures in a uh, abandoned museum with like taxidermy. I can hear an open mic. Please fix your please fix your uh, your mic issue or I will server meet you. Juan, 
how large of a creature? Uh, very large, but Juan, uh, please fix your mic. Uh, please go push to talk or I will server mute you. Thank you. Um, all right, so we might go back to this a little bit and maybe I should show a sense of scale for how big the plague creatures can get. Um, I do have a design for one of them that I'm going to refer to. It's kind of this giant um, crocodile looking creature. Let's see if I have the right image of it somewhere. There it is. Oops. Yeah, I did a lot of these before I was like starting getting better drawing shapes, so they, they're they like really, really crappy thumbnails, but so I was just concentrating purely on the idea. So let's maybe like get a basic silhouette creature, shrink that. this maybe a bigger body I'm just like improvising something here because I actually haven't worked out this creature too much beyond the head so it'd be something along this and he'd be maybe about space dad you have what 39 minutes until the stream starts oh oh shoot I thought it was hmm I guess it was Eastern time that they said that it was going to start. All right, so I'm going to, I'm, we're actually going to have to cut the concept design class short. Folks. You got 20 minutes to do your wrap up and closing notes if you want. All right. Dang. Only got about an hour in here, hour in today. All right, folks. Um, be cool. Uh, we'll do more involved stuff next week. But I hope that I've given you some. I hope that I've given you like a little something to work with and to think about during this time. Um, I'd love people to dig through a lot of the inspiration that people have posted already in chat. See if there's anything you vibe with that you want to learn from. And uh, I'm gonna draw a little bit more here, but then we'll kind of cut it cut it short. Yeah. I had a misunderstanding, like I thought that the, uh, I thought the stream, uh, the, I thought the special stream was going to be going on at 7 p.m. Well, in that case, I might actually run a figure drawing workshop tonight. But anyway, this will happen occasionally, like I won't be able to get, a, get to do a full class session. Uh, so anyway, I encourage all of you to participate in Ethan Becker's stream in a little while. Yeah, the scale could be something along these lines, like a really, really giant thing. Kind of bloated and sick. I like the idea of the pelvis with kind of like withered withered remnants of legs or something, and the arms have kind of just grown some extra kind of limbs and stuff. Like this creature used to be human. Skeletal fit. Shadow of the Colossus meets like SCP-049. Yeah, there's a little bit of SCP in there for sure. Um, it's and this creature in particular is king of this. This would be this, this creature that I'm developing is um, one is the first one that really appears in the story. Um, and is kind of made with the with a Captain Hook crocodile thing in mind, especially regarding one of the other main characters. 
and later on uh, the creature gets transformed into a, um, uh, a character that looks a little bit more like Devil Man, but then his personality changes when he does, like he becomes more more friendly to the uh, the, the girl who's the main, who's the real main character of the story, who uh, that Dr. Laszlo here is mentoring, actually. There we go. No, that's fine. But when I'm making these creatures, I definitely want to emphasize like illness and rot and kind of like they look kind of like living rotted taxidermy creatures and uh, with like mismatched parts and stuff with like animal and human and other things and like evolutionary weirdness. Like, and they also are they also are sick. Like this guy looks like he's ill. Um, Yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna cut it short about here. I think. Thank you all for coming, and I strongly encourage people to come to the uh, come to the live the Ethan Becker live stream. Um, just uh, it should be streaming in a little while from now, and I'm going to cut it off here. Cut it off here. Thank you. Thank you. Mhm. Mm thanks. Thanks. Uh, we oh uh, the next the, the next class. The next class. Here, one second. I can hear myself. myself. Very punch, I'm going to serve you. All right. So the next class that we will have uh, will be um, fr fr Friday, 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. We'll be doing an animation class. I'll be doing a demo there. I'll actually be utilizing some of the approach that I'm using for drawing for animating characters. So everything that I'm doing is... Uh, Everything that I've been doing in these classes is, is connected and are connected together. Like the end product that I'm aiming towards is making animated films. And that's what you should be doing in any of these that you attend. Like if, if your figure drawing is gonna reinforce your animation and your character design and everything else, it all interconnects. It should not be, it should not be completely separate from each other. Anyway. Berry Punch, please fi Berry fix punch, your, please. Fix your, fix your mic issue, please. Please, mic issue. Please, please go push to talk. Let's go push to talk. Yes. Sorry. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry. Mm, I'm just gonna back out for a sec. Okay. Okay. I'll just individual mute you instead of server mute. Um. All right. So thank you all for coming. Oh, and uh, someone asked if it's a Pacific time or. PDT. Um, it's it's going to be 2:30 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Uh, we'll, no, not tomorrow. Uh, Friday, so day after tomorrow, uh, we'll be doing an animation class. And yeah, like like I was like like someone said in Twitch chat, oh, what I'm doing is not tracing. It's uh, you're trying to find line of action. You're trying to find and construct shapes, and understand things. Uh, you can even like do anatomy studies this way and stuff and try to insert anatomy into things and so on. But anyway, yeah, we're going to cut it here. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, and I will, see, I will see you in the uh, in Ethan's stream.